once it comes to tests, that's what trials are. Trials tests, um, they test our faith in God. Trials tests our character. Trials test our ability to endure, to persevere, to go through difficulties, challenges. That's what trials do. James addresses the letter to the people he called my brethren. And so this passage was written to James's brethren. He calls them brethren because they are children of God. They are in the same family. They are in the family of God. And that's why you and I, as Christians, if you are born again, the Bible says, we are born from above, born by God, we become members of the family of God. And since we are members of the family of God, that's why we call ourselves brothers and sisters in Christ. So this passage is addressed to people who have put their trust in Jesus Christ as Savior. So if you are listening to me this morning and you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, this message is for you. But you have not, if you have not given, if you have not trusted Jesus as your Savior, please do so, so that you can benefit from what we are going to share. So James is telling you and I how we should respond when we encounter, when we face trials. How do we respond? And that's what we find. It, it doesn't end there, but I just took verses 2 to 4. If you read from verses 5 to 12, it's also talking about how to respond to trials. But let's just focus on verses 2 to 4. So the first thing to ask ourselves uh, is, what are trials? I have a few definitions here. A trial is a test in which you experience trouble or adversity. So when trouble comes, it will test you. And that's a trial. And trouble can refer to, you know, problems, difficulties, distress, um, adversity, all the things that concern you, all of that, they are all problems. Struggle, stresses, suffering, they all come under trouble. So trouble refers to anything that um, breaks or disturbs your state of being calm, or it disturbs your peace, it disturbs your comfort, it disturbs your happiness, your joy. That's trouble. Somebody that, something that causes things not to be the way they are supposed to be, that's, that's trouble. You know, you've set your life, it's quite orderly, and then something just comes and upends everything. That's trouble. And that's a trial. So we face challenges, problems. Once it comes to tests, that's what trials are. Trials test, um, they test our faith in God. Trials test our character. Trials test our ability to endure, to persevere, to go through difficulties, challenges. That's what trials do. So that gives you an idea what trials are like. Trials test your ability to bear under pressure, under situations, and you don't give up. Because what happens is that when trials come, we have a tendency to, to run away. There's somebody that I know that loves that prayer of Jesus Christ. It says, lead us not into temptation. You know? That actually what he says is that lead us not into trials. 
Lord, it says, don't allow us to be tested. But you see, if we are not tested, if we are not tried, we wouldn't develop endurance, perseverance. We wouldn't develop character. We will not. Our faith won't be tested whether it is genuine, whether it is authentic or not. So I've titled what I'm sharing with us this morning, When You Face Trials. When you face trials. A trial is a situation. So when you face trials, what happens? Do you change for the better or for the worse? When you face trials. Do we see your good side or the worst part of you? A trial, here's another definition. A trial is a situation that God sends or allows in our life with the intention of revealing our loyalties. So, trial, God sends or allows trials into our life for a purpose. Where are your loyalties? It tests our motivations. The things that you do, what motivates you? What's behind the things that you do? Trials test our character. I've said that. They test our commitment to God, our trust in him. And what else does trials do? God allows trials or sends trials to help him to purify us, to strengthen us and to mature us. Now, some trials are small, like when you are stuck in the traffic. What happens? I don't deal with that very well. Or somebody cuts in front of you. Remember, it's a test. Try is a test. So it's testing you. So what do you do? Hmm? Hallelujah. Now, those are supposed to be the small or little aspects of trials. Or when you have to wait. I went through that on Tuesday and I didn't find it funny. Have you been in a situation where you have to wait? What happens? Tests, it tests your patience. Doesn't it? Aha. Uh-huh. What is it? Those are, those are not the challenging aspects of trial. They are the little ones, the small trials. But yet, for some of us, they trip us so badly. Mm. Lateness can be another trial for some of us. We've missed opportunities. We've lost some important things because of lateness. And it has become a trial for you. But those are little aspects of trial. Hmm? All right, let's look at the big ones. You know, I, I was doing a study and about handling finances. And they are encouraging us to be able to, it says, if you are, if you are single or you, your family depends on one person's uh, salary, you should be able to save up to six months of your salary for emergencies, for eventualities. But if you are married, aim at saving the salary of the two people combined for three months, three months salary of the two people combined. Now, imagine that you've not done any of that. And then one of you loses his or her job. Now, that's, that's a trial. That's a big one. You lose your job, there's no money. What do you do? Remember, trials test, they test our faith in God. They test our ability to bear under situations. What do you do? Or your landlord just gives you a quick notice. 
and you have to move. There is no money to move anywhere. You are in a relationship and then for no reason, the guy says, sorry, we are not continuing. Hmm? Or your marriage breaks down. Look at Job. Job lost children. He lost everything. I even lost his health. These, those are the big ones. What does the Bible tell us about Job? Let's go to Job chapter 1, verses 13 to 19. Job 1, 13 to 19. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. When the sapiens raided them and took them away, indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you, the devil is wicked. Spared one person to bring the bad news. Verse 16, while he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels, took them away, yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the ground. And they are dead. And I alone... Have escaped to tell you. Verse 20 to 22. Then Job uh, tore his robe and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. Trials. But we see the response of Job. He worshipped. He didn't speak ill of God. He didn't blame God for all that has happened. He's a real breed. I, I'm not sure I will respond like that. But the Bible is telling us how to respond when we face trials, whether they are little ones, small ones, or they are the heavyweight like Job. We need to know how to respond to these issues. Now, if you read the whole of this passage, you find that it was not God that sent the sickness, the disease, and the calamity that Job went through. So we want to believe that God doesn't send those kind of things to test your faith. When God tested the faith of Abraham, what happened? He says, sacrifice your only son to me. At the end of the day, God didn't kill Abraham's son. Isaac lived. So I want to believe that God would not send sickness, disease, and calamities to us because he wants to test our faith. He wants to purify us, you know, change us, transform us to be like Jesus Christ. But you see, the devil... We do those kind of things. So just the fact that we're living in a fallen world, we live in this world of wickedness and evil. So you find that we face all kinds of trials. Trials come in all, all shades, all sizes, all forms. They can be trials like disappointments, frustrations, can be misunderstandings. All of those things will come as trials. They could come to us as trials. We have dreams that uh, upended unfulfilled dreams, unexpected, um, um, just unexpected needs that come up, those can be trials. Or met expectations, they can come to you as trials. But we know that any loss is, is, can be a huge trial. Loss of investment, loss of a loved one, any loss could be a serious faith your ability to be a persecution. 
conflicts, those things, they can, they can actually um, try your faith. Failures, they can also try your faith. If you fail at something and then you start doubting yourself, doubting your ability, doubting whether God cares for you, whether God loves you, you owe and you are not able to pay, that could be a trial. You have a problem child, of course, that can challenge you seriously. So the disappointments we face, whether they're in our relationships, in our careers, um, in our personal lives, those things can actually challenge our faith. They, they, they can come across as trials. And the Bible gives us a, um, some, a, a few lists. I'm going to read a few passages of the Bible to show you some of And if you notice each of these passages, you, you notice that <laughs> it's interesting. That's when God wants us to rejoice in trials. Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 to 12. Matthew 5, 10 to 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. You know, they want you to do something wrong, but you stand your ground. You say, no, I'm not doing it. I do the right thing. Now you suffer for that. They come after you for that. Now it goes on to say, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now verse 2, it says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Now these are situations that don't, don't call for joy. They are not situations that call for you to celebrate, but rather they are things that will make you to be sad and depressed. And then God says, do the opposite in emotion. The natural tendency is for you to be depressed, for you to be morose, for you to be sad. And God said, no. Be exceedingly glad. Not just that you should be happy, but exceedingly. Well, thank God that he will give us the ability to be able to do so. Praise the Lord. And it reminds us, it says, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Other people who are people of God have gone through similar situations. Luke chapter 6, verse 22 to 23. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Of course, you become a Christian, your former friend, your friends rather, they just, sorry, you know, you're no longer part of us, so they exclude you. Mm. Exclude you in so many things. Just because you follow the Lord. And what does he say you should do? Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For indeed your reward is great in heaven. And he reminds you again, he said, For in like manner your fathers did the uh, same to the prophets. You see? The people that have gone before us, they went through similar situations. So, so what the Bible is telling us is that trials, are, they are inevitable. Trials, they come to every human being. Everybody who lives in this world will live through trials. You face troubles as human beings. Job chapter 14 verse 1. Man who is born of woman is of a few days and full of trouble. As long as you are in this life, you can be sure that trials will come. The... All right. And in the passage we read in James chapter 1, it says, Count it all joy when, not if, when you fall into various kinds of trials. So trials will come. That's what the Bible is telling us. We can't escape it. In fact, it's, it's, it's the norm for you as a Christian. Even Peter said, those of us who are Christian will suffer persecution. That's a trial. So you, we won't escape it. Thank God that we are shielded. We are in the south. Those in the northern part of the country know what persecution is all about. You know, in, in the university, they have a um, compulsory courses and they have elective courses. 
dryer is not elective, it's compost. <laughs> and you must pass it. <laughs> you don't have a choice. It's not optional. So trials are common to us. Trials are the expected element in our life as Christians. So, now this is interesting. God wants us to expect trials to come. And he also wants us to prepare for trials. So that when they come, we are not caught off guard. So we need to expect them. We need to prepare for them. And the other thing that God has done is that God knows that any trial that comes your way, you are able. First Corinthians 10, he says, or oh, any temptation that comes to you, he says, first of all, it's common. Other people have gone through that. So it's not strange. It's not anything strange. But he says that what, say God knows you are able. So there's no trial that have, there's nothing that you are going through, you are going through now that you are not able to deal with. God says you are able to, God says, I know you will overcome. I know that you'll be on top of it. That's what he's saying. So don't think that I'm an underdog. I can't deal with it. God said, no. You know, when God and Satan was, they were having an interaction. What did Satan do? He said, God, hey, you are the one to see. He said, have you seen my servant Job? A perfect man. Satan said, hey, God, you are the one. You protected him. Protected all his heart. You protected all his family. God, God was boasting, and that's the same thing God does. That anything you are going through in this life, God looks at you and says, No, no, I know, I know you, my child, my daughter. You can, you can handle it. You can deal with it. You can overcome. You can. That's what God is saying. You can. Don't say, I cannot. God knows you can deal with it. It's, it says you are able. And he also said, I will make a way of escape. You are able. But apart from that, I will be there to ensure that you come through victorious at the end of the day. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's what God is saying. So don't, don't throw up your hands and say, oh, I, I'm done for. No. But, but you see, what we, how do we normally respond to trials? What do we do? Once trials come, uh, like I said, some of us just want to escape. We don't want to deal with it. See, this is not where you say, let sleeping dogs lie. They'll still be there. Whenever you come back, you face it. That's the thing I found about trials. Remember, it's a test. It's like you're doing an exam. You do, you, you, you've been through school. If you don't pass it, you repeat it. And, and that's what I found in life. You see, yes, you keep repeating it. So I, I, I am learning now, for instance, I know that I have challenge with um, um, impatience. And I see myself facing issues that task my patience. And so now that I'm recognizing that, I'm realizing that, look, I have to learn to deal with that. Or else it will continue to be a recurring test. That, that's the way it is. That, that's life. So how do we respond? We want to run away from it. But yet God is giving us opportunities for us to you know, have those aspects of our life that he wants to strengthen for, for them to enjoy that strength, that support from him. Aspects of our life that God wants to change. That's why we, we go through these trials. But we want to run away from it. Some of us get angry when we face, you know, when we face those trials. We, we, we just, we're angry. And then we, we when people hear what comes out of our mouth because we're going through trials, they, they are shocked and they're wondering, ah, what's wrong? What's happening? We, we get bitter. We attack anything around us. What human beings and... Uh, have you seen somebody, the, the, the vehicle, uh, the tire goes flat. What do they do? Kick it. I said the tire is at fault. Uh, our response is to try us. They're interested. They're interested. So in a, a difficult situation thing, when we face trials, you know, some of us get so confused. 
we are baffled. And then we ask God, why? Why is this happening to me? Why? And then we become introspective. We start thinking, have I committed any sin? Have I done any? Job did not commit any sin. And he faced trials. But that's the way we respond for some of us. We become, we think, ah, because I am not, I have not, like there are some people, it, once they don't pray in a particular day and something goes wrong, it's, like, ah, it's because I didn't pray today. That's not the response God wants from us. So what's the response God wants from us? If you go back to the verses 2 to 4 we read, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Now, that word count means evaluate, consider. So when you face trials, one of the things we should do, that means we need to prepare to face trials before they even happen. But when it happens, one of the things you need to do is to consider or evaluate your response or your attitude in trials. What are your natural responses to trials? What are your attitude to trials? So when the Bible says consider, count it, it means to consider. Um, in J.B. Phillips' translation in verse 2, he says, When all kinds of trials and temptations crowd into your lives, my brothers, don't resent them as intruders, welcome them as friends. That's not easy. Normally, we, we don't, we resent trials. We don't welcome them. So, what the Bible is asking us to do is that, look at your attitude, look at your response when you face trials. And then when you discover that you're not responding the way God expects you, you do a change. Change of attitude, change of mind. The second thing actually, he said rejoice. We've come across that. Rejoice and happiness, there's no difference between them. So, he's saying rejoice in trials, be happy in trials. Uh, it's not saying that you should be smiling, you know. I, I notice that we do it as Christians, you know. You, you lose a loved one and then you see people come and say, ah, you know, that we should be happy. We should not sorrow. Oh, no, sorry. I got, I, let me get it right. We should not sorrow. They forget I said, we should not sorrow like unbelievers. It didn't say we should not sorrow. But Christians will tell you, you, you have to be happy. He's smiling. No. Even when he says we should be happy and, and rejoice in trials, it's not happy. It's not a happy occasion. It's not a joyous occasion. But God is asking you to do something that is contrary to your natural inclination. And that means we need to turn to God and say, yes, eh, say I should be happy in this situation. you got to do it through me. I, I surrender to you. Help me to be happy. So we need to be joyous. Now, to be joyous doesn't mean that you have to be smiling all over the place. But it means that you are stable. You're not moved by what is happening. What is happening doesn't just suddenly turn you into something else. So joy is not only about smiling and being happy. It's also about being stable. You don't move by what is happening because your trust is in the Lord. So check your attitude and your response. Rejoice in trials. Know that the trial has come to test your faith. Okay? So every trial that comes into your life tests your faith. And what does it test? It tests whether you trust God in this situation or not. You have no money. Would you trust God? Or would you try to do it in all your strength? Now, it doesn't say you fold your hands not doing anything. It's just that whatever you are doing, you are trusting God or you are looking up to him to guide you and lead you as you do whatever you're going to do. So, trials tests, they test our faith. Do you trust God or you don't trust God? You know, some people, when we face trials, what happens? It shows whether our faith is strong or is weak or non-existent at all. Or maybe even not genuine. When you face trials, is it when you pray more or is it when you don't even pray at all? That's what trials do. They show where your faith lies. Finally, trials build 
give us the capacity for us to endure, for us to persevere. And so, what God is asking us to do in trials, he says, allow it to do his work. Don't run away from it. Be there, go through the trial, do it with an attitude of joy, trust in me. And he says, at the end, what does he say it will do? He says, you will be perfect. Perfect means you'll be mature. You'll be becoming like Jesus Christ in your character. He says, you'll be complete, lacking nothing. So all the things you need to be able to deal with the challenges of life will come to you as you go through trials successfully the way God wants you to do so. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Father, thank you. It's not usually easy when we face these difficult situations. But thank you for your answer. Thank you for your provision. Help us to continue to trust you, look up unto you, depend upon you, so that whatever comes our way, we will overcome using your own tools and all the skills that you provide for us to do so. We give you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.